Hi, my name is Vandad Nahabandipur, and I am the author of iOS 4 Programming Cookbook with O'Reilly. Today I want to show you something that I have been asked a lot. I want to show you how you can create a solution to uh, a bar button item in a navigation bar which has got an activity indicator inside it. Now as you can see in the screenshot I got a bar button item that's like a refresh button, it's got an arrow in it and what really lots of people want is for this button to be changed to this so you get an activity indicator in it. So this is I, 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 actually, I actually have to warn you before before we get started because um, one, one of the things that we want to do in this example code might get get your application rejected. It's not the way we do this, but it's a certain string inside the application that can cause your application to get rejected um, when you want to submit it to the App Store. I will give you the solution for that, and it's a completely perfect way of doing this. It's uh, it's not uh, really uh, this specific thing that we do here, which re makes your application get rejected, but it's the way you do this. So um, Apple literally looks for specific things in your inside your application's binary, and if and, if, and, it, and if they find that specific string, which I will tell you about, they're going to reject your application. So let's go ahead and create a simple window-based application. I've already set one up. And inside your window-based application, go ahead and create a root view controller with a NIP file and create um, uh, um, a navigation controller. Now, I really don't want to go through this whole thing because there's a limit of 15 minutes of video on YouTube, so do whatever you want to do, but create a view controller that has a navigation bar on top. However you want to create it, I really don't care. Um, I really suggest that you create uh, like how I've created it here. So set up your navigation controller and um, in the app delegate, create your uh, create an instance of your root view controller. You can name this another thing, whatever you want, and just put it inside a navigation controller and add your navigation controller to your window. Now, as I said, we don't really have time to do all these things here in this video, so I just assume you're, you, you can't do this. So let's go ahead inside the root view controller. What we need in the root view controller is a refresh bar button item that we add to the navigation bar and an activity indicator. I've already set these things up here, as you can see. Set an instance, um, an instance variable for yourself. Call it whatever you want. So this is the name. The class name should be UI bar button item. And that is the button that we add to the navigation bar. Add another instance variable and call it whatever you want again. This is the loading activity indicator the class should be UI activity indicator view now I've created um, declared properties from this and I have also as, as you can see by the way I've retained these things so they're retained and go and synthesize them in your implementation file in your M file of the view controller go and synthesize them I've also gone ahead and created and uh, allocated and in, initialized the UI bar button item so you can see here in this block, I have created a bar button item and I have created of type, of type system item refresh. So just to get that whole uh, refresh arrow inside the button. And I have linked this button to the perform refresh uh, method, which I have defined here. Very, very, very simple. The activity indicator, I've set it up here with a white style. So very simple again. And in the view did load method, I have added the bar button, the refresh bar button item to my navigation um, item, which is the navigation bar on type uh, on top, represents the navigation bar on top. And remember, in the view did load, never do any type of animation. If you want to do it, do it in the view did appear, but not in view did load. Hence the animated parameter set as no. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this application. You can see in the simulator that now I have a refresh button. Perfect, okay. Let me also reset my simulator here. It's just, all right, I'll run the application again. Great, okay, I got a refresh button here. And if I bring this up, you can see that this button, pressing it, will call the perform refresh method in my root view controller, which is here. It's a little thingy that, that you might want to remember. It's a, it's a GCC macro. So if you add it, uh, print it 
as a string, as a C string, it prints the name of the method inside which this is getting called. So it's, it's a very, very handy trick. You can see there's a perform refresh. Anyway, we don't have time for that. So what we want to do here is um, to go ahead when the button is pressed, we want to add the activity indicator. Now this is this is the key that I want you to get from this video. Once your UI bar button item is added to the navigation bar, the iPhone SDK itself is going to change the, it's going to literally wrap this button around another class. So we will go ahead and print, print out all the objects that are in the navigation bar on top when this button is pressed. So Okay. All right. As you can see, when I run the application and press this button, oh, look at that. There are two sub views inside the navigation bar at the moment. This is what we're looking for. You see, our button's class name has changed to UI navigation button. We want this thing. And this is literally the thing that's going to get your application rejected if you start looking for it. If you put this string inside your application, your app application is going to get rejected. So I have to warn you. Now, I'm going to leave the solution up to you. I'm not going to tell you how you can get around this problem. You can, you can be clever, but all I can tell you is if you put this whole string like this inside your application, your application is going to get rejected. So just try to be a bit more clever. Just try to be a bit more clever. I'll leave the solution to you. So I will do this. Okay, I'll convert the class name of this subview to a string and I'll compare this. Compare. I'll put a to do here. Be careful. So, you got to be careful with this. You shouldn't really put it in your application, you just have to do something. not to have this whole string here. NS. I'll do a search. So we found it. We found the button that we were looking for. All right. Um, after finding the button that we were looking for, we want to make sure that this button is actually view, don't we? Because we want to add a sub view to it. We want to add our indicator to it as a sub view. So we have to make sure that it's a view. Okay, I'll type, we got it. I'll run the application. And I tap on this button. Here it says we got it. Perfect, okay, we got the button. What we wanna do now is to get rid of that arrow. Now you might be surprised, but that arrow inside that button is actually an image view. What you're gonna have to do is go through all the sub views in this button and find that arrow. Now there's a little trick, that arrow you can go ahead and enumerate all the subviews inside this button. I don't have time to do that right now in this video, but, I, but the, the trick here is that that arrow's image view is the only image view inside that button that is not at the x and up, at, at the x and y position of zero and zero. So if you look for any UI image view inside that button that isn't positioned at the x and y position of x, of zero and zero, you got your arrow. So let's go ahead and say for now I will say if the sub view in that button is a UI image view and um, frame And its Y position isn't perfect. We got it. We got the arrow image view. 
I'm going to run the application. There we go. We got the image view. Now what do we do with this thing? This is, this is a bit complicated. I'm going to make it simple. The way I made it simple is just I remove it. The way you have to make it a bit more complicated, but more smart, actually not more smart, smarter, you have to remove it, but retain it in a, in a declare property. So you want this error to come back at some point. You don't really want to remove it. So once you remove it, you want to, you want to add it to this button again at some point. I won't do that. I'll make it really simple. I remove it. And then what I will do, I will say my activity indicator, I want to add it to the center of this button. Subview navigation bar. And I'll start the animation. Add the activity indicator to that. That's all. I'll run the application. Okay, something obviously went wrong. Start the animation. Activity indicator, the center is... Okay, let's have a look. Da, 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 da. Well, let me let me not add let me not set the center and see what happens. Oh yeah, it, it gets added correctly. I wonder what the problem could be. All right, okay. What I will do then to position it correctly, I will just Okay, because yeah, the center isn't really going to work properly there. All right. Um, okay. Oh, so CG rect gets width of a sub view in navigation bar frame. Or I'll just get its bounds. I'll divide this by two. Actually, let's let's put it in the frame. Then I'll say CG rect gets width. I'll divide this by two. Do the same thing for the Y position. Do it with the height this time. And say activity indicator frame. There we go. All right, there it is. Got the activity indicator in there and it's animating and it's literally at the center. Now, this, this, this is complete, it's working at the moment. However, I wanna warn you again, do not put this in your application. Be more clever. As I said, I'm not gonna give you the solution, but be a bit more clever. All I can tell you is that the whole string can't be here. If you want to search another way, go ahead and search another way, but make sure that this specific string isn't inside your application. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope it wasn't too quick because there's a limitation of 15 minutes, but um, I hope you'll come back to this channel. I'll be uploading more videos here every Sunday. So um, look out for more iOS development and uh, OS X development videos here.